Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest, and welcome to the Spitsbergen Artist Center in Longyearbyen, Svalbard. That is at 78 degrees north of Norway, and just a little over a thousand kilometers south of the North Pole. If you've been following along the past week, you know that I am here on an artist residency, and I have been very busy outdoors doing ice installation, which is my absolute passion with natural color. But I'm also very excited to share that I had a solo exhibition here, and it's all of the work that I did while I was on residency looking for natural color in Svalbard. So I'd like to show you around. So artist residencies are an incredible time to just create, have time to reflect and investigate. And that's exactly what I got to do here in Svalbard. I came looking for the colors that I might be able to find in the land and sea of this incredible high Arctic region. And guess what? I found some color or let's say Svalbard shared some color with me. And that included seaweed, mushrooms, mud, which is super exciting to work with, as well as some man-made color in the form of iron and rust. This is an area where prospecting turned to coal mining, and there are a lot of remnants everywhere here of rusty metal. And I decided it would be fantastic to see what kinds of color rust might be able to bring to my natural color palette as well. So let me show you around the gallery so you get a good idea of all of the incredible colors that Svalbard shared with me while I was here. So when I arrived here, I didn't know that I was gonna have an opportunity to have a solo show. And honestly, the space here is absolutely phenomenal. So I wanted to take my interest in installation and combine it with my love of natural color and see if I could create an exhibit that showcased the colors that I was working with, as well as my love of sculptural elements in my work. So let's start with all of the colors that were given to me by Svalbard, and that is in the form of botanicals, as well as rust. So this wall is all silk, and it shows you all the different colors. So I have mushroom, I have mud, which was wonderfully high in iron, so I was able to play around actually with tannin and the mud, or the iron in the mud. I have all the seaweeds, of which one brought me this incredible pink color, and one brought me this beautiful green. Unexpected, I've worked with seaweed in the past and it's been mostly neutral colors like these, which I also had, but I tried maybe five different kinds of seaweeds and was really lucky to have two of them bring me unique and new colors, green and pink. And then I looked at rust. This is something I've been interested in doing for quite some time, and that is printing with rust, and I was not disappointed. So this is the wall of silk that represents all of the colors that I got to work with. 
Now, as I mentioned, I worked with seaweed when I first started working with fiber on a residency in Iceland. And the seaweed there brought me some beautiful neutral colors as well as a little bit of orangish hue, but nothing in the pink or green realm. So that was quite exciting. What I wanted to do in this space beyond showing the fiber was also to honor the actual plants and matter that I use to dye with as well as the dyes themselves. Now all of these dyes went into ice installation as part of my repurposing, but I also chose to showcase some of them so that people could see the beauty of the dyes themselves. So take a look at these. So here are all of the seaweed dyes that I used. And I want you to take a look at this one. I mean, look at that pink. This was a cold soak directly from a seaweed that I believe is called horsetail. And it is what brought that beautiful pink in the silk. I also had some beautiful neutrals, some of which I believe this one is actually the green. You can see the green in that bottle. But again, many of the seaweeds were of a neutral cast, but I just loved how they looked and wanted to be able to show others how beautiful the dye itself can look. And these awesome bottles came from a group of people who own a cafe here called Husky's Cafe, and they were kind enough to give these to me so that I could use them in this gallery show. All right, let's move on to the wall of color. This represents all of the colors as well, but this was made from wool. I had not intended on using wool on this particular trip, but when I got here, I could find beautiful 100% natural wool in the supermarket. <laughs> so I bought four different kinds of wools and I dyed all of them in the different pieces, including all the seaweeds as well as mushroom. And then I also did some rust dyeing where I wrapped these around rust pieces. And then I also played with dipping these in slaked lime, which brings about this incredible purplish hue. And also the mud, which I mixed with tannin. So the iron in the mud, I was able to have this beautiful dark color. And so many different beautiful pieces of wool here. Now you might look at this and think, hey, wait a second here. Isn't that blue? And yes, the answer is this is blue. I'll tell you why. So no, there is no blue here besides the sky and the sea, but I wanted to be able to represent that as well and bring a gift to leave to the community here in Svalbard and that is indigo. So while I was here, I built an indigo vat with the help of many different people and also spent a lot of time working in the indigo vat as a gift back to the community for hosting me and allowing me to come into their area and explore the colors. So the blue in this piece behind me is indigo. And as I said, it represents the sea at the bottom and the sky at the top. So as you go through these, you can see all the different kinds of wool that I used. And again, for each color, I had four different ones. Some were merino, some were a silk blend. This was a silk goat blend, which was beautiful. And then we had just some 100% sheep's wool as well. And so this included the indigo, all the different seaweeds that I had here. And then as I moved up the wall, I got to the mud <laughs> and then the mushroom is here. And then the rust, which came from the human color left here, as well as the rust in the mud, which is a natural occurrence. And then again, the sky. So 
This piece was really exciting for me because I have dreamed of doing larger scale installation and that's exactly what I got to do here. So let's move on to the other fiber and this is all of the rust dyed fiber. And I had so much fun exploring with rusty pieces that I was able to find on my foraging trips and bring them into the studio to work with all these different fibers, do some rust printing, and, I mean, look at this, wow. And then do some shifting as well. So I played with the rust and the tannins to be able to do some binding. This was a cloud binding, as well as just some direct prints like that to represent some of these beautiful pieces. And then this might be one of my favorite pieces. It is on silk. It was mud dyed first in the iron mud. And then I did a print with iron. So all of these beautiful pieces, silk and cotton and some linen, all to represent the rust that I found and then was able to create patterns and just some really lovely pieces of fiber. As a thank you to the pieces I foraged, I honored them here in this display of the nails as well as the larger pieces, all of which will be returned to where they came from. So they will go back to the land. Although many of these pieces are relatively new, I can tell because, for example, I have a windshield wiper somewhere in this bundle. <laughs> uh, some of these pieces might be older, and so they need to be kept here, and all of this will be returned. So since none of the rust can come back with me for many reasons, I decided I also wanted to bring back prints made from these on paper. So this next display is all of those pieces I just showed you, but printed on paper. They're not exact prints, but I love them because they are much more abstract in nature and that tends to be what I'm interested in, as you know. So check out this. This was super exciting for me to try. It was new to me, something I've been interested in trying out. And I really love how these pieces turned out, some of which were more exacting. But as I mentioned, many of these were just bits and pieces of prints. You can see some of the nail pieces were a little bit more direct printing. I had a tin can, <laughs> which I really liked that one as well, and then just pieces that came through with this beautiful rust darks, as well as some almost like light blues that are left from the process that I think are just exquisite. I absolutely love this one. Just that blue next to that one sharp rust piece and then some other things that are much stronger in terms of their print. You can see as I back up, I got some beautiful darks and lights. And yeah, I'm really happy with these. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with those, but I'm thinking I might embed those in wax and do some more encaustic work. I think that could translate really beautifully with that stone-like quality that I love so much and that kind of ethereal look of both the prints and the wax itself. So there's just two more things to share with you. Let's head to the other side of the gallery. This was a very simple piece that I wanted to try. So I wanted to have an interplay of the indigo, the rust, and the tannin, as well as this piece, which was rust dyed here. And all of these marks were made from tying namaki style and using the stones that fell out of the 
seaweed that I foraged for. And you can see here is all of the stones that were used both to tie these pieces as well as just fell from the seaweed as I foraged for, including this huge piece here, which may actually be coal. There's a lot of coal here. This piece also used the same namaki style, and I used the tops of the nails to create these ties here and this pattern throughout. And then I introduced a little bit of tannin here. Now this color, which you may be saying, what? This is actually this whole process that's then dipped in slaked lime and it turns into this incredible, almost maroon, purplish to a nice sort of brownish color. And finally, you can see the larger stones that I used coming from my time here foraging to create this same larger tied pattern with namaki and these all dipped in the iron indigo vat. This three pieces are one triptych, if you will, and really I'm very happy with them. And the last memorial wall that I did, honoring the seaweed and the mushrooms or the botanicals that I used, I saved pieces of the seaweed that I foraged, the different kinds that I used here, and dried them, and they turned into these incredible sculptural pieces, as you can see, some of which are just so delicate, beautiful in terms of how they come outside of the wall or off the wall to create these forms and really mother nature being the amazing mother nature that she is. I also saved <laughs> all of the mushrooms that I used for the dye and that's what these two pieces are. Lovingly pinned them to these wood pieces I found along my foraging trips, put them in the freezer, freeze dried them, so they'd stay these beautiful shapes and become a part of this wall. Again, to thank the land and sea of Svalbard for all the beauty that it provided. And just for fun, I had a photographer friend here print some of my installation photographs and put a few of these up. I had a lot more, which you have seen from last week's video, but here are a few of the installations that I had done just prior to having the show. And really what an incredible place to explore my love of ephemeral installation. Now there's one piece that's not here anymore, and that is I also created an ice installation for the opening here. It's something I had wanted to do for a long time. I actually froze seaweed into different shapes and created a sculpture here of ice and then allowed it to slowly melt in the space while we had the opening. I don't have any film of that here. The colors were exquisite and the seaweed just looked so beautiful in and amongst this entire installation. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for letting me walk through this with you. It was such an incredible experience. There were a lot of helping hands to make this happen, including my boyfriend, Chris, and several of the artists who were here on residency with me. And I also wanna thank Elizabeth Bourne, who is the director of the artist residency here as well in Svalbard. It has been an incredible six weeks. I cannot say enough about it and I actually can't wait to come back. So what I'd love to do next week on Color Quest is maybe show you a little rust dyeing. We can take a look at what I made and maybe make something together. Thank you so much for joining me here in Svalbard and I look forward to seeing you next Friday on ColorQuest. <laughs>